The Build Show today, we're talking framing. You know, most houses in America are probably still framed with two by fours, although a lot of places you're gonna see two by sixes. But what you don't see very often is this two by eight framing. I'm here with my buddy, Jake Bruton from Aero Building Company in Columbia, Missouri. And Jake is building a house right now with two by eight. So Jake, tell me why you decided to go two by eight framing on this project compared to the standard for you, which I know is probably two by six, right? Yeah. So in our assemblies, we, we're always, we're constantly making choices. Mm -hmm. uh, in this house, this is my personal house. We did a, a value assessment for, you know, if we spend an extra $1,500 to $2,000, can we up the wall everywhere? Our, our framers are still putting up the same amount of lumber. Yep. We were already working with a custom stud height anyway. Yep. So we're not dealing with pre-cuts. So if we're cutting it, this is the same amount of time as that. Yeah. We do a small change in our, in our material budget. We get a lot more R value out of it. We take a, a stud cavity that could be an R19 if it were just filled with fiberglass or loose fill or something. And then we're able to bump it by making a couple changes by like adding the one inch, the 6.6 .6 Huber Zip R. Okay, so this is sheathing on one <coughs> side, bonded to an inch of polyiso. And this is on the back side of your two by eight framing, is that right? Yep, and it's continuous. So when we start talking about the R value of this, this is an R6 over the entire assembly. Yeah. When we talk about R value in the cavity, the problem with that is it's broken up by all of these, these studs that are low R value. So we're starting with this. It's an upgrade as well, yep. but it's an upgrade that pays itself back. So it's, it's, not, it's not a bad choice to, to do insulation on the exterior. I mean, code's starting to call for it too. Yeah, and my guess too, there, <laughs> there is a strength benefit, right? I'm seeing you're framing this on 24 inch on centers. You've got some floor trusses here bearing on these, and basically the floor trusses are centered right over each one of these 24 on center studs. That's a lot of capacity with a two by eight there, right? Yeah, and uh, in this house it's two floors, so we're stud, floor truss, stud, roof truss. Dang. The layout is the same upstairs as it is down, down here. Yep. You gotta pull the layout, so why not just make it match? Yeah. Uh, we aren't killing one of the top plates. We're still doing a double top plate. The framers are more uh, comfortable with that. We're not gonna fight them over it, no big deal. Uh, but the compressive strength of this is a lot more than a two by four. Yeah, for sure. Now talk to me about insulation depth and uh, what you're gonna end up with final R value on this two by eight wall. So the final R value on this wall is somewhere around an R42. So we have that six on the outside. We have two inches of closed cell. Uh, and this, I mean, right now we have two inches of closed cell and that zip R, we're already at what code asks for. Oh my gosh. And we have what, five and a half inches on to the inside yeah. that we can still fill. So this will get blown in fiberglass. It's a cost effective insulation. We mm -hmm. already have our air seal. We already have great, a great start to this assembly. At that point, we're, we're R42. And That's it right. also gives us some other choices. So. This, we're in the pantry and we have an ice maker and a freezer going in this section. We would normally end up mounting a water line on the wall and having to have the, the freezer sit out or yeah. the ice maker cabinets have water lines and things running through them. Here, yeah, we're, we're putting in an exterior wall, but that's not the, it's not putting it in an exterior wall no, when there's seven inches of, of insulation outboard from tons there. Tons of insulation. And the other thing <coughs> that I'll show you too is, look, Jake's got a uh, Fujitsu multi-split on the outside of this wall. So this is three indoor units with their line sets, their condensate, or not their condensate, pardon me, their um, refrigerant, line. refrigerant lines, supply and return. He's already got R6.6. .6. He's got his two inches of rigid spray foam in there, which is R14, right? So yep. R20 in the wall. And this is all inboard of that. So any additional in insulation he gets in here is gravy. But this is genius. Check this out. I saw this earlier and it took me a minute to register. He's got, it looks like a load point right there from above. He's got two uh, floor trusses coming down to a bearing point. This is his two by eight right here. This is his other two by eight. So those are on 24 inch centers. But how does he bring that load down? He's got triple two by fours. That's awesome, Jake. Which means that your hand can slip back here behind this. As and well so, as the foam. As well as the foam, right. The foam is slipped back there. I, if the foam wasn't in, I could easily get my hand back there because you've got almost four inches, three and a half inches or so of air gap behind this big post, which is bringing your bearing. Yep, That's so genius. unlike here and here where this is nail base and layout for drywall or the sheathing on the outside, 
This one doesn't have any bearing except for actual physical bearing from above. That's amazing. So there's no reason for it to be on layout or That's touch cool. both sides. So let's talk cost for a minute. I know people are going to be asking that. I, th I think you mentioned uh, somewhere about 1500 2000 bucks more in material for this house yep. for 2 by 8 versus 2 by 6 What's the size of the house? Uh, this house is 4,300 square feet. So not a small house, 4,000 square feet. And did your framer charge you additionally for nope. labor? Nope. That's so amazing. Actually, on this house, our in-house carpenters framed it, and we, we figured out the cost was the same. We, wouldn't have, we would make an easy argument against when our framers tackle stuff for us that there's no reason to charge more. You're putting up the same amount of wood. That's pretty amazing. Now, if you're subbing this out to a framer and you're watching this in some other part of the country, I could see a framer having some nominal upcharge yeah. uh, just because there's more, more lumber. Weight. There's more weight. Exactly. Yeah. They're loading more lumber. And um, there is probably an argument to be made, which you already talked about, pre-cut versus non-pre-cut. You can get two by sixes in pre-cut sizes. Um, you're probably not going to get two by eights in pre-cuts. But like Jake said, he was having, because of these ceiling heights in here, he was going to have to cut things anyways. So there's no difference there. But if you had to go two by, or if you were going to go two by eight, you didn't have pre-cuts, there's some additional labor there. So in other words, if you're a framer watching this, don't yell at me that there's no cost. Because I've realized there, there might be some cost difference. But in this case, there wasn't a lot. Jake, good stuff, man. You built a great house, dude. Thanks. Guys, if you don't know Jake, he actually is on the Build Show Network with me and a couple of other builders. He's got some great content and there's a ton more to see on this house that Jake has videos going on. He's got new videos every week on buildshownetwork.com. Make sure you check out Jake Bruton's page on Build Show Network. Hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.